Hey, welcome back. So I actually got a comment um, on one of the things I asked. What do you want me to make a video on? And someone asked, should I do UWorld a second time or another QBank? So I'm going to make a uh, video addressing this topic because a lot of students who are studying for step one are always debating, should we do UWorld once or twice? Or should you maybe even just do UWorld once, but also supplement that with an additional QBank? Um, so let's just get into it. I'm going to talk about what I think about it, and maybe this will help guide you guys. So... Um, my personal experience is the fact that I only did UWorld once. So I went through UWorld one time. I did them all with 40 question blocks randomly. And I uh, added flashcards for every question that I got wrong on UWorld. So the good part is, as I mentioned, I added a bunch of flashcards. So I was able to remember the questions I got wrong on UWorld. But I also did AMBOSS. And I did about a thousand questions during Dedicated with AMBOSS. But the reason AMBOSS was different was because AMBOSS I did um, untimed. I did it right away. I did it in the format where you do a question and you find out the answer right away. And I also did it with like a very little pressure. Like I would be doing AMBOSS questions in the car if we're driving somewhere. I would be doing AMBOSS questions when I woke up. Maybe I'm eating breakfast and I don't really feel like going hard on flashcards. And so I was doing AMBOSS just kind of sprinkled throughout studying, but with much less pressure. Um, and the whole point of that was to kind of like at least passively be studying without the um, <laughs> with the load without the load that comes with the timing and um, intensity of UWorld questions. I had also done Kaplan. I did about 800 questions of Kaplan before I started Dedicated. Um, this was during my first two years of preclinical. And then I did about 200 during Dedicated. And the reason I, for that is because I did not like Kaplan as much as I enjoyed Amboss. So I ended up doing many more Amboss. And then the other caveat that's important to know is I never repeated UWorld again at all. So everything you're about to hear from me is um, data that I've collected from other students who have done UWorld twice, um, or even just friends who have told me what they've gotten out of doing UWorld twice and the pros and cons. So the way that we'll approach this is I'm going to go over the pros and cons of doing UWorld twice, and then I'm going to go over the pros and cons of doing UWorld once and then adding on a secondary QBank. And then I'll end by actually giving you what I personally think you should do, um, and then obviously discuss my limitations. Much like a scientific paper. Or my presentation will be organized um, in a much like a scientific paper. So here are the pros and cons of doing UWorld twice. It's doing a second pass of UWorld. The pros are the fact that you will improve your timing. UWorld questions are very good because they are very similar to the real thing in terms of timing. So if you are ahead of the game and if you always finish UWorld blocks with about 10 minutes left, you can bet your butt that you'll finish the real um, USMLE with about 10 minutes left because the questions on UWorld are either just as hard if not harder and longer than what I saw on the real uh, USMLE. So the good part about you doing UWorld a second time is I think you'll get more used to the longer question styles and you'll improve your timing and maybe then you'll be able to guarantee that when you walk in there on test day you always finish sections with at least five to ten minutes left which I do recommend because that gives you a lot more freedom to go back and, and spend more time on the questions you need to spend time on. The other benefit of doing UWorld twice is you will be better able to pinpoint your weaknesses. UWorld has an amazing interface and it tells you exactly the number of questions you got wrong in each subject. So if you do UWorld twice and let's say you get a question wrong twice about like renal membranous nephropathy, then you know that you need to go back and review membranous nephropathy because if you get that same question wrong twice, you clearly don't understand it. And that's the benefit of doing something twice because when you get things wrong repeatedly, they reinforce the fact that these are the big, 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 big gaps in your knowledge. And then you can really focus your studying on that. Now let's talk about the cons about doing UWorld twice. And these are some things that I personally experience a lot. One, if you're like me and you make flashcards for every UWorld question that you got wrong, then when you do the UWorld questions again, a second pass, you will remember the questions purely based on memory, <laughs> right? Because you made flashcards for every question you got wrong. So for you, you may not even remember, oh, tertiary syphilis is associated with, I don't know, tabius dorsalis. You may just remember, oh, I remember this vignette. And I remember it was like a 42 year old man who had syphilis. And I remember the answer was tabius dorsalis. You didn't even remember any of the logical reasoning for why the answer was the answer. You'll just remember those links you made in your head or those implicit memories, right? And so instead of um, re realizing the concept gaps that you have, you'll probably just regurgitate a lot of information that you remember. Um, as I mentioned, the second con is you'll learn more associations rather than le reasoning. So you may see the same question twice and maybe you'll get it wrong. Maybe you'll get it right the second time, but you'll be getting it right purely based on the association. You're like, I remember this question and I remember I picked B, but I also remember why 
like that wasn't the right answer and the answer was D. But you may not actually understand the reasoning as to why the answer was B, why the answer was D as opposed to B, right? You may just remember the association. And the third thing that's a con is you will be preventing yourself from seeing the different ways a question can be asked. Anyone who's taken step one will tell you there's 80 different ways to ask that same question you saw in your world. Maybe initially they were asking you, how do you test for tertiary syphilis? On another test, they could easily ask you, what are symptoms of tertiary syphilis? Another way to ask that question is, this person has these, these symptoms and you have to diagnose them with tertiary syphilis, right? So there's so many permutations for how one question can be asked that if you do the same question bank again, you don't widen your perspective. You instead keep the perspective exactly the same. And now you're like focused on all these like small minute details. When in reality, you should start realizing like this question can be asked multiple times in multiple different ways. And you should not get used to just being like, oh, I know this question, therefore I understand it. You should really get used to understanding what are the different ways this can be asked. And I think doing a second pass of your world, you would be robbing yourself of that opportunity. Now, let's actually talk about the pros and cons of doing a separate Q-Bank. So let's say you finished your world once and you added on a, another Q-Bank. Well, the pros here are exactly what I mentioned earlier. Q-Banks add more perspective to your life, right? <laughs> the people who make UWorld are not the same people who make Ambas, who are not the same people who, that make Kaplan. So they will show you that this question can be asked in multiple different ways. For example, I remember multiple questions in Ambos and Kaplan that would hint on the same concepts that were tested on UWorld, but ask it in a completely different way. And the good part about that is that now I was like attacking questions from all the different angles. So on come test day, you know, like, oh, okay, this question is about tertiary syphilis, but it can also be asked in this way. It can be asked in this way. It can be asked in this way. It can be asked in this way, right? So you're more prepared for that. Um, the other pro about another QBank that I personally feel is because of the shorter question stems and sometimes the fact that you will be doing them with less pressure, you remove the time constraint. And sometimes that's actually what you need to study. I don't know about you guys, but when I was studying for step one, one of the biggest reasons I didn't do as well on UWorld blocks early on is because I felt so freaked out by the time pressure. I was like, I gotta go, 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 go. And that would actually rob me of learning the concepts, right? That would rob me of actually focusing in on a question and really being like, what am I missing here? And by doing a second QBank, I can actually just kind of take my time, you know, look at the question, spend, I would spend maybe five to 10 minutes sometimes on Amboss questions and be like, what am I missing here? I know what the answer is, but I don't know why I just don't understand what the answer is, you know? So I'd be able to spend that time. And so that time pressure was a pro for me because it removed it and that allowed me to really solidify my reasoning. And then when I went back to you world, I was able to go boom, 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 because I had already worked out the reasoning concepts with that secondary QBank. Um, the other thing I like about another QBank is you can, people always say don't waste your world, right? You should do your world with the 40 question block, 60 minutes, very test-like atmosphere. So it's very hard to do your world with the instant feedback format. You can do it, but I would just say that it might be a waste because those are very good test-like questions that you should be doing under a test-like environment. But if you do another QBank, you know that that's not like the cream of the crop. You know that's not the gold standard, but you do know it's pretty good. So you can do that second QBank with less time pressure, as I mentioned earlier, but you can also do it in the format where the moment you pick an answer, it gives you feedback. So let's say you pick the wrong answer. It tells you right away why your answer is wrong, and then you pick something else, right? Uh, and so that instant feedback is actually really good for learning. It's so good. You need to have feedback right away for learning, and that secondary QBank was what really helped me with that. And the last thing is you will be forced to understand the reasoning for questions, right? When you do a secondary QBank, um, you're going to be asked questions from all the different angles. And because you'll be asked, no, you'll never be asked the same question twice because it's an entirely different QBank, you'll be forced to understand the reasoning as opposed to memorizing associations, which is what I think you would get if you did UWorld twice. And again, I'm speaking purely based on experience because I do have friends that have done UWorld twice. And I myself did a couple UWorld questions that I gotten wrong once. And I knew the answer right away, but that was purely because I knew what the question was and I knew I'd gotten it wrong before, right? I didn't actually fill in my gaps. Um, so what are the cons of doing another QBank? The cons of another QBank is that your timing for test day may be off. Because more often than not, Amboss, Kaplan, whatever it is, those questions tend to sometimes be a bit shorter and sometimes also take uh, less amount of time to to answer because they may not be easier, but they just takes less time to understand. And, you know, it's just... It just tended to be that whenever I did Kaplan or Ambos questions, I would just not be as crunch for time. So you should not do another QBank in hopes that it'll help solidify your testing 
times taking strategy. The times taking strategy should be done purely through your world because I think that's a really good method. The second con is sometimes these other QBanks can confuse you a bit. And if you don't spend the time to understand the nuances, then you may end up getting confused. Like for example, Amboss may ask you a question about tertiary syphilis, and that question may have a completely different answer than the tertiary syphilis question that you got asked on UWorld. But the reason for that is because Amboss may be asking it from another angle. And if you don't spend time to understand that angle, you may just be like, why is it sometimes this answer and sometimes this answer? I'm just confused, right? So you really do need to take that time to understand the nuances because that's where those like, really small points come in and that's what ends up separating like 240 from a 250 from a 260. Um, and sometimes I'd say secondary QBanks may not be as high yield. But again, as I said, if you're aiming for a 250 plus, I think you need to start getting used to the fact that aside from the high yield, you also need to know the minutia. You need to know how else can this question be asked. You need to know the lower yield stuff for sure. So with all that being said, here's my conclusion. I personally never did a second second pass, and I'm kind of happy about it because, as I mentioned, I think a second pass reinforces regurgitation as opposed to conceptual understanding and seeing the different ways one question can be asked. So I personally would favor another Q bank over a second pass of U world. But again, there are limitations to my conclusion, and the limitations are I never did a second pass, so I personally don't really know if maybe I would have benefited from it. Based on myself and the knowledge that I have of Anki and flashcards and the way brain learns, I personally don't think it would be useful, but I personally haven't gone through it. So just take that for what it's worth. Um, ideal case scenario, you should just do both. Try to do a second pass and another Q, uh, another Q bank, but you know, life's not that perfect. So I'm pretty sure no one has time for that. But if you do, I try to do both. Um, so with that, I'll end the video here. Please let me know if you have any other questions and I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. Peace.